Unbelievable. What some hooks. Opening day public land bird. <coughs> oh, he's got some hooks. Got a pretty nice beard too. I checked him in, put greater than 10 inches, but it may be right at 10, maybe a hair shy. Boy, how did this turkey and the gnats are eating me up. I'm gonna probably have to get the thermosail out. Whew, let me get it out and I'll talk a little bit more. I got the thermosail rocking, so maybe these bugs will die down a little bit. This turkey, this was, this was an unbelievable hunt. I didn't roost this bird yesterday, but uh, I was in here yesterday morning and I knew exactly where he was at and I didn't mess him up. I actually walked right up under him yesterday morning doing pre-season scouting and he gobbled good and I decided I'd come in here this morning and set up on him and uh, work my way in a different way. I almost got messed up. There's a lot of water in here and uh, almost got to where I, I couldn't get to him and I almost stayed out in the middle of one of them sloughs and where I could just hear better. And uh, if I'd have done that, I wouldn't have been able to set up where I did. Came in here, set up, he's gobbling on the roost, and uh, really close. And I'm set up for him to come from this way, back this way, which that's where he was roosted. My blinds turned, I got this see-through blind here. And uh, I got one back, that the back wall is solid, but everything else is see-through. So uh, I like to have that back wall where the turkeys can't silhouette me through the blind. So I was set up for him to come this way. And he came, he pitched right in off the roost. He landed about 40 yards and worked his way in, but he was just moving too fast. I should have been calling to him and I might could have slowed him down and made him strut, but it was another turkey behind me. I don't know what it was. I never heard it yet, never heard it gobble, you know, but he knew it was there and he went right on by and went right to it. And he gobbled a few times and he got far enough away, I turned my blind around in a, orientation where it is now. We got the back solid wall back behind me. And he came, he strutted and started coming up through here. I started not to turn my camera on and it's a possibility I did not. I reached up there to hit the button to cut it on. And uh, anyway, I got back and I just wasn't really settled right like I needed to be. I was facing more rather than, rather than turning perpendicular where the turkey, I had to shoot the turkey out front. Uh, out front of me a little bit of a bad position and uh, ended up making a little bit of a bad hit. It's funny me and Matt Dykes was just talking about the other day he was in Florida. He was watching my video on YouTube uh, one of my Georgia hunts where I hit the bird low and broke a leg and he left there flying and with a dangling leg and he said he uh, he's watching that video and he looks up and sees the turkey coming in a big gobbler and he shoots it in the leg the same way I did and it flew. Well, this turkey's out here and I'm in a bad position and I'm not really settled and I settled just good enough and I let her rip. Lo and behold, I hit this turkey in the leg, hit it a little bit low. So he flies off and it really doesn't look like a good hit because he's flying so pretty. And uh, I see one leg dangling. I said, well, I've got a chance. As long as you see one leg dangling, you got a chance. And what made it even better, it's a lot of water out here. And I saw him set his wings and uh he's up over this water and sloughs and stuff he set his wings he kind of turned and he glided a little bit left which put him right in there well i have to go way up here cross a beaver dam and work my way back down and when i got right about i was looking the whole way and uh there's a slight chance he landed on a peninsula out here but i, I thought he went on over it so i crossed it and got on the other line of woods on the other side of the slough and started coming coming down there and it's pretty clean woods, real clean woods. There's a little bit of garbage right on the water, edge of the water. And I, I was looking all in there and uh, right about where I thought he would be, I found him stone dead. He's gut shot. He got, I got one leg and uh, broke that leg. It's actually right about the thigh area, which is uh, it's a little lower than the thigh. But uh, I strung his guts out pretty good and he was stone dead when I got over and I didn't wait. I didn't. I don't like to wait a long time because I almost like them to be a little bit alive where they'll kind of maybe be flouncing around and let me know where they're at. I'm going to walk out here and look. My arrow went right through it and, and into a stump. 
I'll show you what these big tomahawks do when they expand. They do really, really good on gut shots because they stay so big. They don't hit a lot of, a lot of heavy stuff. Little turkey after I shot him, he did kind of scoot across the ground just a little bit before he got airborne. I found one little teeny tiny, and I don't know whether you can see that, uh, drop of blood on that feather. You know, you can see where he kind of scooted across the ground right here a little bit, but I didn't see any blood. I want to walk out here and show you kind of, I could see a little better, a little further than I normally could see because of this open water out here with basically no trees in it, maybe a cypress or two. And uh, <clears throat> he flew out this way, went over the water. And I could see, if you can see way across there, I could see, uh, see him banking and turning, making a little bit of a left turn right there, which I threw him going all the way across that water out there, you know. I could see him, he'd done set his wings, and he was gliding down, just losing altitude. I figured, figured, you know, I figured I'd find him alive over there. And I was almost positive he made it across the water. And uh, he'd be somewhere just on the other side of the water than he was. Yeah, I guess as you might could have seen, this is a decoyless hunt. And uh, if I'd have had decoys, I'd probably kill the bird right when he flew down, right off the roost. He'd have walked right in. And I'd have been calling to him more, you know, trying to get him to see the decoys. I probably wouldn't have had him out there at maybe five, six yards. But uh, decoys aren't legal yet, so I didn't have them. Sure makes it a lot easier to pack a turkey out. I got plenty of room for them. Uh, hunted for years without decoys, so it can be done. You have to do a little more calling to them. And I sure hope I hit record because you, you'll see I was calling this bird trying to get him to stop. You know, otherwise he'd have just blew right through like he did the first time he came through. And uh, I just wasn't really, wasn't really aware what was going on. I was trying to get my camera going that first, uh, first little bit when he first came in. You know, so oh, gosh, I scared he's gonna see me public land. I really wanted to kill him bad and when I drew back on him that the second time when I drew back my finger was on the trigger and it was literally just da, 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 just tapping it and I was like calm down you know I couldn't calm down <laughs> Whew. very fortunate to get this bird nice old bird I know everybody's heard hit them high and watch them die but uh, my saying is you can't hit them too far back and uh, what I'm going to show you here you look at this turkey here, up forward to the front, you got his crawl, what holds his food, but he also inflates his crawl to make his chest look bigger and make him look bigger. So he's, it's completely full of air right now. And that thing can be as big as both your fist. And it's inside, it's, it's inside, I've been cut it where it, you know, kind of herniated outward, but it's inside this, which make, makes his breast look a lot bigger. And, uh, Plus, if you hit him in the breast, nothing's going, nothing good going to come out of it. Now here, one I've hit as far back as you could possibly hit one. And uh, I still recovered the bird. Now on the other side, it came out further forward, not that much, and got him right in his leg. And uh, it's actually the rear part of the muscle. It didn't really break the bone, but it came through the through the muscle part of the leg, top of the leg, top of the drumstick, and bottom of the thigh, which was just solid gut shot is all it was. Uh, it did hit, it nicked the uh, gizzard a little bit, but it didn't hit any liver, lungs, or heart. And the turkey uh, got airborne and went uh, went as far as he could go, and I think he pretty much just died, died in the air and landed on the other side. Never made it another step once he landed, so it was a uh, <clears throat> it was a one flight and then a uh, dead turkey, which those are pretty easy to recover. They're real predictable. Turkey's a lot a lot more predictable than a deer, but uh, I just wanted to show you how far back you could hit them and uh, show you that inflated crawl, which is up to the front, and that, that uh, you won't kill a turkey going through that. You won't kill a turkey going through the breast muscle, so 
all the vitals is to the rear and, and high. But uh, if you're gonna be low, you're better off being back and low, not forward and low. That's a bad combination.